Japanese Prime Minister Abe has warned that any reporter or doctor who publicly discloses the truth about Fukushima will face 10 years in jail. The situation at Unit 2 in the Fukushima Daiichi reactor complex seems to be getting worse and worse. Unimaginable levels of radiation are being pumped into the ocean which scientists warn pose a cancer risk to millions of Japanese citizens or even the rest of the world. However the, the government has ordered a complete media blackout on all reports about the dangers this poses to public health. The radiation measurement was 530 sieverts, or 53,000 rems, rho and gen equivalent for man. The dose at which half an exposed population would die is 250 to 500 rems, so this is a massive measurement. However this isn't the worst part for their radiation. The robot couldn't penetrate deeper into the inner cavern containing the molten Korean and scientists claim the readings would have been a lot worse. This is why it will be almost impossible to decommission units 1, 2 and 3 as no human could ever be exposed to such extreme radiation. However it also means that the will remain a diabolical block for the rest of time as it is sitting on an active earthquake zone. Photos taken by the robot did reveal that there was in fact was some damage to structural supports of Unit 2 and that all four buildings have been damaged by the original earthquake some five years ago and by the subsequent hydrogen explosions. It is also feared that if there is an earthquake greater than 7 on the Richter scale, it is very possible that one or more of the structures could collapse leading to a massive release of radiation from the building falling on the molten core beneath. But Units 1 2 and 3 also contain cooling pools with very radioactive fuel rods numbering 392 in Unit 1, 615 in Unit 2, and 566 in Unit 3. If an earthquake were to breach a pool, the gamma rays would be so intense that the site would have to be permanently evacuated. However there is some good news. The fuel from Unit 4 and its cooling pool has been removed. Every day since the accident began, 300 to 400 tons of water has poured into the Pacific where numerous isotopes including cesium-137, 134, strontium-90, tritium, plutonium, americium and up to 100 more enter the ocean and bioconcentrate by orders of magnitude at each step of the food chain algae, crustaceans, little fish, big fish than us. Fish swim thousands of miles and tuna, salmon and other species found on the American west coast now contain some of these radioactive elements, which are tasteless, odorless and invisible. Entering the human body by ingestion they concentrate in various organs, irradiating adjacent cells for many years. The cancer cycle is initiated by a single mutation in a single regulatory gene in a single cell and the incubation time for cancer is any time from 2 to 90 years and no cancer defines its origin. As well as the mountain water reaching the Pacific Ocean, since the accident, TEPCO has daily pumped over 300 tons of seawater into the damaged reactors to keep them cool. It becomes intensely radioactive and is pumped out again and stored in over 1,200 huge storage tanks scattered over the Daiichi site. These tanks could not withstand a large earthquake and could rupture releasing their contents into the ocean. Prime Minister Abe recently passed a law that any reporter who told the truth about the situation could be gold for 10 years. In addition, doctors who tell their patients their disease could be radiation-related will not be paid, so there is an immense cover-up in Japan as well as the global media. The Prefectural Oversight Committee for Fukushima Health is only looking at thyroid cancer among the population and by June 2016, 172 people who were under the age of 18 at the time of the accident have developed, or have suspected, thyroid cancer. The normal incidence in this population is 1 to 2 per million. However, other cancers and leukemia that are caused by radiation are not being routinely documented, nor are congenital malformations, which were, and are, still rife among the exposed Chernobyl population. Bottom line, these reactors will never be cleaned up nor decommissioned because such a task is not humanly possible. Hence, they will continue to pour water into the Pacific for the rest of time and threaten Japan and the Northern Hemisphere with massive releases of radiation should there be another large earthquake. If this video has been helpful please click like, and if you're new to the channel please click the subscribe button.